There we go. All right. Thank you everybody for coming. I am Laura Johnson. And I like to tell people that I am a recovering goal hater <laughs> because I really, really struggled with goals for a long time. Um, I've got a friend on here that's known me for many years and she can probably attest to that. I wanted to be a goal lover, but I honestly was a goal hater because I couldn't figure them out. And every way that I had learned how to set goals just didn't really jive with me and the way that I function and the way that I work. And so it just became like a really frustrating process for me. So we're going to be talking about that today. So, um, just to kind of give you an outline, the first little bit, um, I'll tell you, I'll introduce myself and then I will dive into what I really want to spend the time on, on like how to set and actually achieve your goals, um, without hating them and without them sucking. And then the last part, I'll share a little bit about what I do. You're welcome to stay on for that. Um, if you're interested and I share a little bit about my program. Um, so the, just a little introduction, I am a certified life coach. I work with, uh, mostly Christian women. Um, I'm the mom of three kids. The oldest is 10 and a half all the way down to four. Um, I've been married for 13 years and my passion that I love to do in my business is that I love to help women love who they are and become who they're meant to be. So I have a firm belief that everybody on this earth has a divine purpose, especially women. And when they get really clear on what that purpose, that divine purpose is for them, they wake up to everything in the world and the entire world starts to shift when that woman wakes up to herself. So what really gets me out of bed, what really like gets me jived about what I do is helping women discover who they are and who they're meant to be. And I have a firm belief that if you are not currently reaching your goals, or if you feel like goals really suck, it's because you're out of alignment with that purpose somewhere. So our job is to figure out where that disconnect is and how to get you back in alignment so that you are achieving your goals because those goals are what's going to help you answer that purpose that you have. So I believe, you know, and I, as I've created this workshop, um, for you, I have broken it down into four different types of goal haters. Okay. So the first one is the forgetters and I'm a visual learner. So I will always be using my whiteboard. Um, just recognize that when I'm on camera, I'm a terrible speller. <laughs> so feel free to point things out in the chat. Um, if I spell something wrong. Okay. So the forgetters. So, so the first one is, um, people who set goals and completely forget about them. Okay. So you'll know that this is you, or you really resonate with this because you buy lots of planners or notebooks. Um, you like to create a vision board that you hang on the wall, but you don't really spend any time with the vision board. You had a really uh, like a lot of fun making it, but then it just kind of hangs there and you don't interact with it at all. Uh, or like you, you say, you know, um, a goal not written down is only a wish. So you'll write down your goal and you'll put it somewhere and you have no remembrance of where you put it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I remember doing that. <laughs> okay. So those are the, the forgetters the four types of goal haters. So the next one is the hustler. And you may recognize yourself in multiple of these categories. I know that I definitely do, um, or did. Um, so just be aware of that. And as I'm going through and speaking, you can go over to the chat box and tell me if you're resonating with any of these or all of them or one of them. Okay. So the next one's the hustler. So the hustler, they set a goal and they go all in on this goal, but then they burn out a week later or a month later. And suddenly they, they're telling themselves like, I need more motivation to keep going. Um, I need an accountability partner. And they'll start asking a bunch of people to work with them in this goal, you know, whatever this goal is. Uh, another thing that they'll find is that they start pressuring themselves. Like when they think about their goal, their heart rate starts to increase. They get really anxious and they'll find themselves just pacing and getting really busy, but not actually doing things towards their goal or, or, or moving along some way. Okay. That's the hustler. Um, the next one is the avoider. Okay. And this, I could have had a PhD in this. <laughs> okay. Because this is my, um, this is my go-to. So the avoider refuses to set any goals because they tell themselves that it's protection. It like, it almost feels protective because they don't reach them anyway, 
or my favorite <laughs> that I also did, um, is since they don't set, they don't reach their goals, they'll start setting a one word intention here. Now I I'm not discrediting setting a one word at intention, but when you're doing it because you have the belief that you aren't achieving your goals, then you're using it to avoid. Okay. So oftentimes they'll, they'll set this one word intention. Um, they'll meditate on this word. They'll buy jewelry with this word when in reality they're avoiding having a goal. Okay. So this was for sure me. Okay. So the next one is the last one is the shamer. Okay. Or the not good enougher. Okay. So the shamer is that no matter you know, what progress you do make, you're always telling yourself that it's not good enough. So you'll know this is you, if you really struggle to celebrate yourself, and we're going to talk a little bit about it, but what will start to happen is when you start working towards a goal and you start telling yourself, like, it's not enough, you're not reaching it. Um, everybody else has some secret sauce that you don't have. And then you'll find yourself scrolling through social media, then telling yourself you have to get off of social media because it's too triggering for you because everybody else seems to have this perfect life. And then you'll go into the, it's the time and season where this just isn't my season. And you'll start becoming a really fantastic mom, for example, where you just go all in on your kids and you use your kids basically as an example to not reach your goals. So the reason why I mention these four categories is because we all live within these somewhere. And even if you are reaching your goals, you know, and, and, you know, we could create probably a whole other category of just like not consistent enough, you know, the, I don't know what we could call that, but, um, you know, somebody had mentioned that in the, in the notes really look at, okay, where am I, where am I falling in these? If I'm not being consistent, which one really is um, is speaking to me. So I want you to go over to the chat box and tell us a little bit <laughs> about which one you resonate with or which ones you resonate with. Okay. So really when you get down to this and you break this down into the, the four different categories of the goal haters, what really starts to happen is, is we can beat ourselves up over it. And then we start feeling that pain and we start behaving from this painful way. So a lot of the behaviors that when we're in one of these four categories that we start to do is when we start to diminish our goals, like we will start telling ourselves that we didn't want the goal anyway. And it, it really wasn't meant to be right now. And your life is really good. And you start like, I, I call it negative, uh, negative gratituding <laughs> where you start telling yourself you should be grateful for what you have. And, and that's like a, that's a very clear sign that you're in one of these four categories. The other is if you start um, spending money on programs that you're not completing, um, you start overspending things, uh, overspending money on things you don't need. Suddenly your Amazon bill starts to go up <laughs> really high. Anybody? No, just me. Um, and then you really go all in on your life which is good to go all in on your life, but recognize if you're doing that from a place of escape and you'll know that you're escaping because new year's will come around and new year's will be painful. Or again, social media will become painful. It will feel very triggering for you. Okay. So all of these things, uh, oh, and then the other one, like you'll start avoiding things or places or people like you don't want to go to a family reunion, or you don't want to go to a girl's night where everybody's going to talk about things that they're doing. So you'll start to like hermit. Okay. So this is why I really, I think this is so important for so many of us, because the way that we've been taught to goal set and achieve is not healthy. And it doesn't work for us. In fact, it actually shuts us down even more. And we end up more stuck and more frustrated in our life. And so when I, when I created this workshop, that's what I really want to focus on is how to get out of that so that you can live in a healthy, sustainable way while reaching goals. So I'm going to come over here to the chat box for just a second. Um, so, okay. So we've got, um, <laughs> Jenny's 100% hustler. Um, the avoider and shamer for getting an obviously avoider. They did choose a word for the year. <laughs> yes, Nicole. Um, and again, I'm not against choosing a word. Just make sure you're choosing it, not from a place of avoidance. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I think you fall into the avoider and the shamer. Yeah. The hustler all in. 
Takes a while to burn out though. Love to buy the tools. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. So, okay. So you're starting to recognize. And, and the reason why I want to bring these up is because um, having the awareness about them is what's going to help you in the next thing that we talk about. You want to know what your behaviors are and what your patterns are, because then when you recognize you're in it, you know what to do to get out of it from a very healthy way. Okay. So when we're talking about goal setting in a healthy way, and of course, you know, we're going to, I'll keep going to the chat box. So if you have questions about this, um, you can ask them or at the end, I'm going to have a, a question and answer. Okay. So the whole reason why we do this is to learn that goals are not the enemy. Okay. Everybody write that down. <laughs> repeat after me goals are not the enemy what is the enemy is our brain not wanting us to change and this is where we start to become very disconnected okay our brain is programmed to keep us safe to keep us not changing even if we're miserable which is kind of crazy but it thinks it's helping us and then we have our our soul like our very like the spirit that lives within us that wants to learn and to grow and they start going head to head so it's important to recognize that goals are not the enemy the way we think about goals is the enemy. So once we start shifting that, we can start working together with our mind, body, and soul in order to create a sustainable way to achieve your goals. So when we are talking about goals and so many people are triggered by that word, I want you to really think about that goals are just the medium to our growth. Okay. What we're really focusing on is to answer our purpose, our God-given purpose. And in order to do that, we have to be willing to grow. So goals are just that medium that brings up all of our shit. And excuse my language, but you all know what I'm talking about. The second you set a goal, all of the crap comes up, right? That's what we want. But what's happened in the past is when that stuff comes up, you've used that against yourself instead of collecting that as the gold. That is your work. That is your growth. We want that stuff to come up. We want to be able to collect all of that. And, and, and think about it this way, okay? Our soul wants this growth. It wants to overcome challenges. It wants to, uh, it wants to be the hero um, in its own story. I, I always say heroin, but then it sounds like drugs. <laughs> so the female version of the hero. Okay. There you go. Um, and, and I think about this often, like think about one of your favorite movies. Okay. Imagine in that movie, they were totally content at the beginning. They continued along the journey, still happy. And then they got to the end of the movie and nothing changed. It would be the most boring movie on the planet. Like nobody would watch that. No, we want to see them overcome challenges. And there's always like those challenges that build up. And then there's the part where they think everything's falling apart. There's no hope all of life. Like they'll never be able to accomplish anything. And then suddenly something tips the scale and they become that hero of, of the journey. That's what we want. <laughs> like, so when we're setting a goal and all of the challenges start to come up and then we tell ourselves a story about how much we suck, we're missing the out on all of the growth and all of the opportunity to do what our soul wants to do, which is to overcome the challenge. So I want you to get really clear on that. Okay. That the purpose of a goal is to bring up your shit. That's it. And then we start focusing on the growth. So when you are stuck, okay, so let's get really clear on this. When you are stuck in those four categories, you are focusing on a goal to make you happy. It is when we focus on that, we are doing a huge disservice to ourselves and to our future and our purpose. When you focus on your growth, then you are reckon, um, then you're creating um, a sustainable, healthy way to become who you're meant to be. So when I'm talking about a goal, I'm not talking about like putting your happiness and off until you do this thing. 
I am talking about becoming who you are meant to be right now. And that person is the one that just achieves this goal because it's who she is. So what I teach my clients is what I call the goal cycle and the goal cycle. Again, you could even label it. If goal is really triggering to you, that's okay. We don't shut your brain. It's going to do that. Um, you can put this as the growth cycle. Okay. You can call it either one. There are three parts that we're going to focus on. So the first is discover. Okay. The second is achieve. And the third is embrace. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. I'm going to draw this into a picture in just a second, but I want you to really get this written down. Okay. What's going to happen is within each of these three steps, you are going to spend a third of your time. Now imagine for a second, as you're, as you're writing that down, I want you to imagine for a second that you had six hours. Okay. You had six hours to chop down a tree and you have this rusty old saw and you get to work sawing at this tree. Let's not even say red. Let's just say dull. Okay. A dull saw. And you go to work trying to chop down this tree with, with this saw and you work 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 and work. And the tree just isn't coming. Eventually at the end of those six hours, the tree finally falls over and you are wiped. You are completely exhausted because you just spent six hours sawing at this tree with a dull saw. So I want you to think about this, you know, as we talk about the goal cycle, it will feel counterintuitive to what I'm about to teach you, but imagine if you were to take four hours to sharpen the saw, and then you go to work and cut the tray down in two hours, you are still spending the same amount of time, but at the end, you have energy to spare. Okay. At the end you are not six hours exhausted. You are two hours tired. This is what it will feel like when you are going through the goal cycle. We are going to slow down in order for you to speed up and have energy to keep going, to keep working through this cycle. So this, um, oh, I'm going to come over. This is a game changer for me. I had no idea. I struggled with the embrace part. I didn't spend any time. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I do have to tell you, so Jenny's one of my current clients right now <laughs> and Jenny would burn out. <laughs> you can go over and read her comment right now. Yes. She would burn out every time, but you have more, you have more energy right now, Jenny, right. Than you have ever had before. And she's starting to achieve her goals faster and faster. It's been really, really fun as her coach to watch her go through this goal cycle. Okay. So I'm going to, let me, okay. Well, what you're going to learn will be counterintuitive and isn't how you have learned to set goals in the past. Okay. So imagine you are standing, I'm always going to put hair on my stick figures and you'll learn very quick that I am not an artist and that's okay. All right. So here's what I want you to, to draw. Okay. Over here is your discover phase. And again, we're going to spend a third of our time in each of these. Here's our achieve and here's our embrace. When you break it down into these three things, what you are doing is you are going to enter a cycle. And when you enter this cycle, there is a start, there's a middle, and there is an end. This is why one word intentions don't typically work for reaching your goals, because when we set a one word intention, it's essentially like taking out this and just choosing to, we're going to pretend this is water. Okay. <laughs> Pretending to just swim forever. You're going to enter the water and hope someday you can get to the end of the ocean. Okay. No, like at some point you're going to drown, <laughs> like not to be morbid, but you are, you're going to drown in the water. You're so exhausted. That is why we want to set a deadline to our goals. It is not to beat ourselves up, but it is to give ourselves a break, a chance to breathe, a chance to rest and relax. That is what we miss right now. 
So we're going to break it down into these three, and I'm going to tell you what happens in each of these. Again, please go over to the chat box if you have questions or if something you know really stands out to you. So when you are in the discover phase, I'm going to draw another picture right here. We'll come back to that. When you're in the discover phase, what you're doing is you are looking at who you are right now and who you want to become. And the reason why we do this is because what I find in most people is that when they're looking at a goal, they're looking at the goal right in front of them. And they think if they get to this spot, life will be better. Okay. This is the, the one of the greatest lies our, our brain tells us about goals, but then we get to this goal and then there's some other challenge, right? And there's some other, like every single time there, we keep getting these blocks and we get frustrated and frustrated. I think a, a really good example of this is how many of us thought that once we graduated from college, life would be great. Or once we, once we got married or once we had kids or once we lost the weight and you get there and you're like, no, my life is the same as it was before. <laughs> it's like, you start getting really mad. Right. But what they're missing and what we're all missing in this is that happiness doesn't exist. When we reach that goal, we create happiness with our mind, but when we're only focusing right in front of us, again, we are missing out on the growth. I want you to think about who you become, who you grow into be when you reach this spot. So when you're looking at this, this is the difference. Okay. This is the, what you're looking at when you're discover phase is how do I become her now? What is different about her than who I am right now? Okay. So I want you to take a second. I told you this will be interactive. Um, grab a piece of paper and pen or whatever you're taking notes on. Tell me what's different as the person, you know, down the road, you know, maybe five years that's consistently reaching their goals. What's different about her than you right now. So I'm going to give you a chance to go over and to write that down. Okay. So I'm going to give you probably about a minute to do that. what we're doing is writing down what's different about that future version of yourself than you right now. So I'm going to tell a little bit about me, um, just as you're writing that down for you. When, when I really started looking at that future version of myself, <laughs> it was very superficial at first. It was like, Oh, better. <laughs> You know, at the time I was like, I, uh, I barely had, you know, like, uh, like I didn't own any blouses. Like all I had were like grungy t-shirts from like hand-me-downs for my sister or something. And then the next thing was like, mm, she'll probably have a cleaner house. Like, yeah, that's it. That's, that's what she's different. It took me a little while to recognize what is the deeper level, like who she is, not just what she does on the outside. Those, those are still important but who is she on a very basic level? What is it about that future version of myself? Suddenly I realized she was more confident. She had a very deep self-trust and self-love that when she made a decision, she wasn't questioning that those decisions that she was confident in, in her answer. That didn't mean she was like, I'm a very introverted person. So I didn't imagine myself extroverted. But what I did imagine was that when I show up, I'm authentically me. I'm not trying to be someone else. Those were the kinds of qualities when I really sat with that, that I started to recognize, um, confidence, uh, Leslie says a woman, uh, who is more confident in herself. Yes. Um, that's what I said, Leslie. Perfect. So yes, like confidence is a huge one. Okay. So as we're looking at this discover, the first is, you know, what's different and so I'm going to write confident. And if you have something else, you know, that's okay too. Okay. So now we know who you want to become. Um, I'm, Nicole, I'm going to come read that in just a second. I want you to also write down who are you right now? Okay. So these might be the qualities. Maybe you are not as confident as you want. Um, uh, another good question is what do you love? 
Like I knew I loved people's stories. I knew that I loved jewelry that had a story to it. I knew that I loved artwork that had a story to it. Like stories was something that was just part of who I am. I want to hear people's stories. And so that very much was part of my discover phase. Okay. So get clear on what's different, get clear on who you are and what you love. Okay. So by knowing these, um, what's different, um, what you love by knowing these things, what you're doing is increasing the awareness of, of you as an individual, because when you go to achieve goals, this will be your compass. Uh, we don't want to lose who we are. We don't want to become something we're not when we're reaching our goals. And so often we find a program or a process that doesn't jive with us. And I, and I mentioned that before. So being able to get clear on who you are right now and falling in love with her and learning to trust her and becoming that future version of yourself, that then becomes your compass when you enter the achieve phase. So I want you to really spend some time, you know, finish answering those. Um, Nicole says, I will be able to determine the steps needed to achieve goals in a proper timeline format. I can't visualize the achieve portion to determine steps to get there. I need to see the whole picture before I can start, before I can start sideline. I hope there is a replay because I have to go. <laughs> yes, there will be a replay. So I promise we will make sure that we get that question answered for you, um, Nicole, in the next couple of minutes or, you know, on the replay, then you can watch the second half of it. Okay. So does anybody have questions about this? You know, you can go over to the chat box, ask me a question. Um, tell me something that you love. Also, you can go over there. What's something that, that just you love. Okay. So when we get from, the, when we get to this point, we often think we haven't started achieving our goal yet. This is where I want you to really start teaching your brain. This is you achieving your goal. This is you working. You have already entered the goal cycle from this spot. I want you to spend a third of your time here. Okay. Next is you choose to enter the water. When you enter the water, I heard somebody once call the, the spot where you're achieving goals, the river of misery. <laughs> and you know, that kind of stuck because when you're in the middle of this, it will feel miserable. And I don't say that, um, to scare you. I say that, and, and it's not miserable because of the hours that you're going to work or the pain that you have to, um, experience. I say that because it is horribly uncomfortable to start confronting the lies you've told yourself about yourself. And it will feel so uncomfortable because you have to start breaking down those stories and bringing all of that shit up that we talked about. So when you get to this spot and Nicole, this is a really important thing, just as you mentioned, is this is the spot where you start planning the obstacles. You create a roadmap. Yes. And then you start creating the obstacles that will come up. Most of us know exactly what to do to reach our goal. I, and <laughs> going back again to the goal hater, the avoider, you'll spend research, you'll spend, you know, hours and hours, months, years of your life researching something. When in reality, you already know, you know, enough to enter the water, to take one step. And I, I promise you, the more you try to see the end from the beginning, the more you will stay stuck because it's not meant for you to know the end from the beginning, because that is the growth. That is the journey that God is taking you on. And he will steer your car. The second you put your car into motion. So I want you to really think about that. You know, that when you're wanting to see the end from the beginning, what you're really saying is I want to continue to avoid this. I want to know every step so I can stay here because it's scary. So when we get to this spot, what we're doing is we are anticipating what are the obstacles. You just need to know one step to enter the water, and then you need to start planning out the obstacles. So what I did this with a client a couple months ago. And for her, it was so fascinating watching her brain, like our brain, if there's any vagueness, um, when we're talking about goals or achieving our goals, it, it just like, it's like a board, like get out of this. You didn't plan this. You don't have time to plan it right now. Too bad. You suck. Like, that's really like how our brain talks to us. Once you start planning the obstacles, like the actual things that are going to come up, whatever you can anticipate, 
then you put your brain into a very strategic way to think and to exist. So at this time, um, a couple months ago, I, I was talking with a client and she wanted to practice intermittent fasting. That was something for her health goals that she knew that she wanted to do, but it was before the holidays. She was going to be traveling out of state to visit her family. She was going to have tons of, of, of events where there was going to be lots of food, you know, parties in the evening. And one of the things we had to do is when you are sitting at your mom's house and your sisters want to go out at 10 o'clock at night, what are you going to do? Like, these are the kinds of obstacles that we were working through. You will want to plan these out. Same thing. Like the second I knew I entered a goal cycle, I knew my kids would get sick without fail. <laughs> like that is one of the patterns that my life has is the second I enter the goal cycle, life happens. And when I got to that, when I started to see that pattern, I thought, oh, okay. I just plan on this happening. It doesn't mean, you know, once my kids are sick and I'm home with them and I'm not doing my goal in the way I thought I should, I realized that I was just shaming myself and keeping myself without ever starting it. So when you get to this spot, I want you to think about how are you going to work through these things and teach your brain that this is, even if life is happening, this is still me reaching my goal because I'm growing through the obstacles. I'm not stopping my goal. I am growing through. I am outgrowing the challenges that occur in my life so that I can be the person that handles these challenges very well. So when we're talking about obstacles, most of us first will think about physical. And I told you an example of that. But the next thing that you want to consider is what are the thought obstacles and what are the feeling obstacles? I'm going to explain this. So the thought obstacle, I had a, another client actually, who's, um, she's working on weight loss and, and you know, all of like, it doesn't matter what the goal is. Okay. So I, I really help people answer their callings and, and what they're called to do. And you can pick literally any goal and you're going to learn this and it's going to help you grow so that you can achieve your calling. So a good example of a thought was that my client had all of the physical obstacles. We had coached on that the week before she had all of the physical obstacles planned out. She had everything she needed to eat on plan that week. And you know what we got on the call the next week? She goes, I had literally everything. I had it all sitting in my car. And guess what? I still went through the drive through <laughs> and she was like confused by this because the next step is planning the thought obstacles. So when you go into, you know, this river of misery, you have a set of beliefs, a set of stories you've told yourself for her. It was, I don't have time. And even when she had the food, she still had the thought. I don't have time for this. I don't know, it's just faster. Even when she had the food, it was so cool. It was so cool to see. That's the kind of stuff we want to see. It was just a habit that her brain had to tell her this lie over and over. Same thing with the feeling. Most of us have a home-based feeling that we always go back to anxiety, overwhelm, um, uh, frustration, disgust, um, shaming. Like these are feelings that become habits for us, that we may feel happiness and we return back to overwhelm. We may feel, you know, all different kinds of, of emotions and we'll go back to the negative emotion that we're used to. When we are reaching our goals, we want to know what those common emotions are because you will then start to see that pattern over and over. So when I really realized this for myself was that when I had entered a goal cycle, you know, and I, I at the time, I, like I hadn't created this. And so it was just like, I had set a goal and I was working towards it and I was getting frustrated. And I realized that my home-based feeling that I always returned back to was despair. This despair that I would never be good enough, that everybody else had their life figured out. And this would just be the way I was. It was like so dramatic. <laughs> and it was so funny because I started writing it down and literally every thought I had, the feeling was always despair. And I started watching that pattern. And what I realized was if my brain could bring me to despair, I stopped changing. I would go back into my hermit. It was a protection mechanism that my body had created. 
This is what's so important when we're thinking about our obstacles is we are learning our patterns of our thoughts and our feelings and our circumstances. These things will keep coming up. You want to set a goal with a deadline to bring this crap up. Otherwise it will always be playing as like the static noise in the back of your head. And it will pull you down every single time. So when you're planning for these obstacles, what are you going to do when you feel despair or discouragement? Okay. And that is like really learning how to process and to sit with emotions, to see those patterns, you know, I, and that's like, I, that's something I teach my clients, you know, all of this, we go into detail, like when I'm actually keep teaching my clients, but not gonna, that's a whole other webinar <laughs> or a, um, a workshop, excuse me. So I want you just to think about that, like plan for each of those coming up. Okay. So what you're going to do at this point is you are going to look for patterns, everything, all of these planning, every time you enter a goal cycle, you are looking for patterns because if you can recognize your patterns, you can learn what to do with them and how to grow out of them. And this is going to be the key to, to everything that you do. Okay. So the second cue with this, okay. Is this third part. And I didn't mean to make it so small. I wanted it, you know, cause remember we're going to spend a third of our time here. I will tell you that this spot right here is the number one spot where I see my clients lose their goals every single time. Okay. So they've set a deadline. And the reason why we set the deadline is to get out of the water. We need to give ourselves a chance to breathe, to recuperate, to um, dry off before we cycle back through. This is how you stay consistent. If you are always in the achieve phase, you are going to burn out and drown. If you want to stay consistent, you've got to recognize this goal cycle where there's a start, a middle, and an end. So when you get to this embrace phase, there are very specific skills to learn in this spot. So the first thing is I want you to really recognize celebration and to learn the skill of celebration. This will feel very uncomfortable to a lot of Christian women. What I have found is that I'm going to scooch this over. Um, what I have found is that a lot of Christian women have a fear of being overly arrogant, of being overly confident, um, of being um, sh too sure of themselves, almost like brazen or brass or brash, brash. It's not the word I make up words all the time. So what they, what they miss is the chance to actually celebrate the, the growth that they're experiencing. So when you get to this spot, okay, and you get to the end, all of us have what we call like our temperature for joy. Okay. We're just going to put the, like a line right here. And when you get to the end, if you have, you'll feel this temperature for joy where your brain will start becoming uncomfortable in this emotion of happiness. So what it does is it will shame you and tell you what you did was not good enough to lower that temperature back to where it's comfort zone. When we get to this embrace phase, we have to increase your temperature for joy every single time. And it will be uncomfortable learning how to celebrate yourself. So oftentimes when I say celebration, most people will say, well, I don't have money to buy something for myself, or I don't, I, I I'm trying to eat healthy. I'm not going to eat a cookie. Okay. That's not celebration. Those are actions <laughs> that society has taught you is the way to celebrate. So when we're, when I'm talking about celebration, I am talking about the feeling of celebration, the thoughts of celebration, the, oh my gosh, like, look at the progress that I'm making, the feeling of being proud and accomplished and fulfilled with what you're doing. We are uncomfortable holding those thoughts and those feelings in our body. And when we're uncomfortable, we are always shaming ourselves back down to our comfort zone. You'll know that you do this. This is very specific, um, behavior. You'll know that you do this. If you're watching a movie and by yourself, 
and you get a little clumped, you know, like, like a knot in your throat where you feel like you want to cry and you shove it down. Like you're happy, you know, like it's a happy part of the movie and, and you want to shed a tear and you shove it down. Or if you are in a spot with your family or, or whatever, where suddenly you're, you're starting to feel a lot of like positive emotions and suddenly you're imagining your kids dying or you're finally happy and you're thinking, Kate, okay, something bad's going to happen. Like, it's like, you're looking over your shoulder. What your brain is doing is lowering your temperature back down to its comfort zone. When you do this, you know, when you're not focusing at this end spot, spending a third of your time here, you are self-sabotaging every single time. This is why people will start a business and then give their business up. This is why somebody will, will lose weight or run a marathon and then gain all of it back afterward. Okay. Because they have yet to learn how to celebrate the person that they've become to hold the beliefs of the growth that they've had and to feel proud and accomplished of themselves. This is an actual skill. I would say of all three parts that this is the most important skill that you will learn is how to celebrate every win that you have. It's the exact same thing. Again, like weight loss just is easy. Like I don't usually coach on weight loss, but it's easy to see this where somebody will only celebrate if they've lost the 50 pound goal that they had, but yet they won't celebrate the half a pound goal. Okay. You cannot lose 50 without doing half a pound. It's just impossible. <laughs> okay. But you're not giving yourself credit for that because you are uncomfortable with joy. Okay. So, it, and it, if I'm like so passionate, I just really want you to learn this because it is everything. When you are setting goals, when you get to this spot, if you do not celebrate yourself, you will never be consistent in your goals. You will never re-enter the goal cycle. Your goals will end here. And my hope is that as you are doing this goal cycle, you are seeing your growth in every step of the way. So the second thing in this embrace phase is to evaluate. Do you remember the scientific method when you were a kid, or maybe your kids are in school and they've learned the scientific method where it's like, you have a hypothesis, there we go. <laughs> we have a hypothesis. We think this is what's going to happen. We test it. And then we evaluate. You can think of the goal cycle just as like the scientific method. Okay. You get to the spot where you're going to evaluate. There's three things you're going to evaluate. The first is you're going to evaluate what worked again, when we're looking at, we're looking at physical things that worked. We're looking at thoughts that you had that worked and we're looking at feelings. I knew that if I was in despair, that wasn't useful. So what worked for me was recognizing how often I was in despair. That was part of my evaluation. That was the process working was me seeing that pattern. So the first thing is. You're going to, um, see what worked then you're going to see what didn't work at one point. I realized that every time I pressured myself to reach my goal, I just shut down. I was like, Oh, I'm done. So that was another pattern. I knew that pressure didn't work to motivate me celebration and feeling proud of myself did. Okay. So that's the second is really seeing what didn't work. And then what am I going to do different next time? So when we look at what we're going to do next time, that's what we take into the goal cycle. When we go back to our discover phase, I knew at that point where I had to recognize my pattern of despair and I needed to recognize, um, my pattern of pressure. And then when I had to figure out what's different, I knew my future self, the person I was becoming, not only was she confident, but she didn't shame herself or pressure herself. She was happy now. And she did these things because she wanted to, she wanted to grow, not because she had to, in order to be happy. Uh, you know, so then that's what, what we take back into that discover phase. And we go back through this process. I do this on a very large scale with my clients and with myself where, you know, we set like a year goal or a month goal, 
But then we set many deadlines within this. You know, I do the same process for myself at the end of each week and, and it's not time consuming. It's like, oh, you know, I can really sit with this feeling of celebration. I can turn on a fun song. I can dance in my room by myself. I can celebrate what I'm doing. And then at the start of the next week, I go at it again and again, and I just keep staying in this goal cycle. So what I want you to really, what I want you to recognize here is that at some point, everyone is in what, well, not at some point, excuse me, everybody is in the goal cycle somewhere. Okay. They just don't know it. <laughs> Maybe, you know, and up until this point, you probably didn't know it either. I want you to recognize, are you over here and have you stayed here for how long? What is that costing you by staying here, this part of the goal cycle? Maybe you're here. Are you drowning? Are you burned out? Are you exhausted? Okay. Every single person is somewhere in this. I want you to get comfortable. Okay. Really comfortable seeing this cycle happen in your own life, because that right there is how you stay consistent. That's how you give yourself time and energy back in your life. When you're in each of these, you know, other thirds right here, this is you sharpening your saw so that you can get to work at cutting that tree down with energy to spare. So I do want to leave some time for questions. Um, you know, we went through a lot today. Um, actually I'm going to go back. I think Nicole had to get off, but I am going to read this. So I think this is where we were talking about who you are. She says she loves experiencing new things and finding joy in small moments, birds singing, sunsets, et cetera, um, at the river. <laughs> she says she's at this river of misery. Yeah. So this Nicole, you know, I know you're going to be watching the replay on this. Anytime you enter your river, you're going to want to experience new things. Okay. Maybe that's changing up a run. Maybe that's um, going to a new networking event. Maybe that's changing a system within your home that doesn't seem to be working. Maybe you want to be folding clothes by a window where you're watching the sunset, you know, something like that. You want to take who you are and put those into your achieve phase. Okay. So you can go over and, and answer every, every question, uh, sorry, ask any questions that you have. Um, that's the webinar. I do want to answer those questions, but if you want to hop off, you are welcome to, I am going to share a little bit about my program and how the goal cycle fits into that. So you're welcome to stay on for that. Um, otherwise, you know, I'll see you if you're not part of the book club, be on, um, uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, for the email list, we are doing the gap in the gain this month. So we always do, um, we always do some kind of personal development book. And again, I'll always teach it to you. Um, okay, Jenny. Yes. Okay. Yes. I will talk to you tomorrow, Jenny. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a little bit, this is my love invitation for you. And I like to call them love invitations because what I do, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about what I do. And I love, I love being able to work with clients to be able to help them set achieve their goals so they can answer um, their purpose on this planet, their divine purpose. So what I do as a certified life coach is I do work one-on-one -on -one with my clients. Um, what we do is a phone call once a week for 45 minutes and it's over zoom. Uh, so it's not a phone call. It's a coaching call over zoom. And I help you get really clear on this for yourself. First, we really dive into the discover phase where we are discovering who you are. And I guide you through this process so you can get clear on who you are and who you want to become. And I've got a, a formula that I use to do that called the discover your, for, discover your calling formula, where this will guide you through. Um, so that you can get clear on what that purpose is so that you can move forward. So the next step is really going into the achieve where you get very clear on what's holding you back. We talk about your to-do list paralysis. Um, you know, we talk about compassion fatigue. Uh, we get really clear on your, your home. I call it the home system study, um, and your decision-making process so that you can become that strong leader within your home and within your family, and that you can get your home and family life working to support you in your calling instead of taking you away from it. And then we go into the embrace phase where you're learning how to, um, how to live from a place of connection, not just connection with other people, but connection with yourself, where you start to develop that deep self-trust 
and, and that, that, um, self love so that you can continue to move forward and you become who you are meant to be. And you start living your full potential right now, not when your kids older, not when you get that dream job, not when your, your house is clean, but actually live that full purpose and that potential right now. This is where you come alive the most. And I watch my clients bloom literally overnight. It was so cool at the beginning of this year where I got on with one of my clients and she just, she just bawled. She said, she's never had a years where she was happy with her life, where she was so proud of herself and the things that she had accomplished because new year's was traditionally a horribly painful time for her to where she just shamed herself. And she realized she was still stuck in the same place. You will transform through this process. Every single one of my clients do. And it is a step-by-step process that I lead and guide you through as we're working one-on-one together. So if this is something that is interesting to you, please let me know. Um, actually, I don't think I have, um, let me pull up the actual link for it really quick. Um, because then you can go, um, then if you want to, um, I do, uh, sorry, now my internet doesn't want to do it. Um, I work, uh, I schedule consultations. No, sorry guys. There we go. Um, I schedule consultations, um, where we spend, where we spend one hour diving into this process for you. And, um, so that's my link to my website. You can see at the top, it says work with me. You can schedule a consultation there. Of course, if those times don't work for you, just let me know. I know some of the times are ski wampus, um, uh, especially with time zone changes. Um, but yes, yeah, so on the consultation, it's an hour long call. We go, it's kind of like, you know, this workshop where you're getting really clear on where you are and laying out the roadmap, um, to where you want to go and how my program will help get you there. You know, I go more into detail on what each of the steps are within this. So it becomes a simple doable thing that you do over and over. Um, so I am, uh, let's see. How important is a support system and accountability while working through goals? Um, Kelly, that's a fantastic question. It really, I'm going to answer this, you know, really honestly, it depends. (laughs) Okay. I have found that people will depend on a support system or an accountability without taking responsibility for themselves. So I had a client, um, that did this to where she felt she always needed an accountability partner to work forward, but they're unreliable. And what she found was that she wasn't taking responsibility to grow herself in that process. And because of that, she was always being held back because she felt like she needed somebody else there. So her growth has been to really learn it, to grow and trust herself. Um, what I have found for myself is that I used to be that way where I felt like I needed somebody else to hold my hand in order to move forward. And I had to grow that self-trust and responsibility. Now that I'm very secure in who I am and who I'm becoming, and I trust myself in the decisions I'm making. Now I like to have my own coach that I, that I am accountable to because it's fun for me. It's fun being able to get on that call, to trust myself, to have somebody else look at my brain, to maybe see things that I missed on my own, um, so that I can work through this process quicker and easier. And so for me, it becomes something that's fun and enjoyable. Um, somebody that I, I personally, I've always had, you know, as I became a life coach, I always wanted keep my own life coach because I wanted to stay living in that transformation, the same transformation I'm helping my clients create. So for me, that became something I enjoyed and I wanted to have my own life coach, not because I depended on her, but because I wanted her because I trusted myself and I just wanted to speed up the process. So let me know, Kelly, if you have any of the questions, very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Kelly. I'm glad that we were able to um, to answer that. Yeah. That's a a common question that I hear, um, with a lot of my clients, um, is I I don't ever want to work with somebody that needs 
that's desperate, but that wants to be here, that wants to achieve their goals, that wants to dive in, you know, two feet, um, just because that's the next step of their growth. Um, so I think that's really important to differentiate, um, where you're at in the two of those. So is there any other questions, any other, um, comments, and I'm just going to wait for just a second. I'm going to take a drink of water. And then if somebody's typing, okay. I don't know if anybody else, can you hear me? It's like gulping I'm a loud gulper. <laughs> okay. Well, I've really loved doing this. Um, I will send a replay out so you can watch this, write this down for you, get a poster board, you know, go through this whole process for yourself and recognize where you're at. And if any time you're struggling with something, I want you to go back and see, okay, at what phase am I in this and how do I problem solve this? Again, we want to get our brain thinking in that, that strategic problem solving mentality. Thank you. I feel like I'm the accountability, I'm the accountability person for friends. I take the leap and then go back and bring them along. Yeah. I think that's such a great thing, Robin and recognizing and and I, I will say this, you know, cause I've seen this in my clients, recognizing that you have that support system for yourself as well. Uh, there is a very common thing that I see among my clients is as they're having transformation, people are wanting to come along, but they're, it, it's almost like, um, they start draining their systems <laughs> where they want to help them so badly that it gets overwhelming for them where they feel like they're pulling them along. You never have to pull someone along, be the example and let people follow in your footsteps. If you ever feel like, especially, you know, with accountability partners, sometimes one can feel like they're pulling the other, it's never a great place to be not saying that you are doing that Robin, but I just wanted to anybody else that feels that way with their friends, um, recognize that you are not, you don't have to pull them along. They just may not be ready. They may not have started this goal cycle and really question these things for themselves first. Um, so you want to get really clear on that, but yes, thank you for mentioning that and make sure that you have your support as well, Robin, because it can, um, compassion fatigue is a real thing where we feel so much compassion and love for other people that it, it starts to diminish our, our own reserves um, for ourselves. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap up. I hope you all had a wonderful time that you're able to really learn a lot through this goal cycle and yeah, be look, be on the lookout. We'll have the recording coming out um, later today. Um, I've got another work, uh, another workshop that we'll do this month um, called the discover your calling for, um, yeah, just discover your calling. I don't know funky name for it yet. Um, and then we've got book club later this month. So we're going to have fun this month. All right. Have a wonderful day. I will talk with you all soon. Bye.